we're okay. <laughs> hey, maybe we'll see. We'll see. You never know. Yeah. yeah. You never <laughs> you know, know because like, uh, was, Justice League it was, was a short good. episode, right? It was like 40 something minutes. 49 minutes, minutes with Four. seven credits, seven yeah. minute credits. Classic <laughs> Marvel. And here we go. Welcome to the Heroes World Quarantine podcast. <laughs> Just like many things, the Marvel stuff was on par and on brand when it comes to leaving you wanting more. Here we go. So I am your host slash cat wrangler, Stupe. With me, <laughs> as always, are the other co-hosts of the podcast, uh, the owners and proprietors of Heroes World, both John and Andre. Please say hello. What's up? What's up, folks? And of course, the Prince of Mischief himself, Mr. Uh, Rob, a.k.a. Ross Gaudet. Oh, so funny, Stu. So funny. I, I, you wouldn't I, like Rob when he's angry. No. <laughs> Don't make here me we hungry. Go. Here you we go. You wouldn't like me when I'm hungry. All right. So we, here we are. We're doing, uh, as you can see, uh, this is a brand new day, a brand new time. Don't disregard what I'm wearing. Uh, as we discuss the episode. Nice three or four of us change clothes. But yeah, go on. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, episode one of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, as you can see on the top of Andre's sh left shoulder, the Falcon, which is a sweet, sweet, sweet uh, action figure um collectible slash statue um okay so john uh the game begins now you were prepping you knew this was happening we've given you eight weeks please give okay. us you know what? i knew this was happening but i didn't know i was going to get sabotaged with having to also watch a four-hour uh snyder cut and uh have a you March know i could have made you do that home. game before john you just i i, I love how <laughs> I you complain yeah. that I, I i it's like t-ball i set up no, I'm, so I'm just saying easily. i'm seeing the he odds put the stacking, ball on the, the tee and you're walking up yeah. going I gotta go pee. It's too hot to hit. It's too hot to hit. Um, you did. You did give me the show that is like the, this my is show, the show. I yeah. I, like yeah. I, I, I'm. I cannot wait till we go back and we do She Hulk, and you're like, oh, oh god. god, I got to do the the description for She Hulk, and it's gonna be rough, John. So <laughs> talk, give about, us, talk about the legal ease. Yes, it goes along with each case. The and David stuff. E. Kelly synopsis. I, I want All specific right. descriptions of the lawyers yeah. and their prosecutors. And so give and us a description role. of the show without okay, the yeah. a positive and adjective descriptions. Are we do I cover like all the way from beginning to end, like like everything that happens? Have you not happens, been like, here for eight it? weeks when Rob did this? Like we even before that, Andre did, Andre did. Andre did the Mandalorian. Full, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll make my judgment calls on to how spoiler I go. Oh Eighteen weeks. Gosh. Eighteen it's... weeks. <laughs> John, I don't right. think you pay so, attention at all. The show, like anyways, the show, like you know so what the it's, podcast it's, is. It's, you know, it's, wait, wait, John. Who? Yeah. Do you know where you are? I, I don't actually. There's been a, there's been a lot to watch. This what, is, week, so. what is your name? I didn't I didn't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sleep go John. Trying let's, to get let's this go. in uh, with the kids. Yeah. So it's it's been like almost ten years since we've seen Papa Doc and his defeat to be Rabbit, um, and he's going on. Oh, sorry, wrong movie. We're not. So this is not a continuation of Eight Mile, I guess, right? <laughs> You're an idiot. No. <laughs> oh, so brutal. Okay, oh. so we're talking. We're talking the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. A uh, brand new show on Disney Plus. Uh, the episode for episode one is called New World Order. We see the return of Anthony Mackie reprising his role as Sam Wilson, aka the Falcon. Uh, we have Sebastian Stan turn, returning as Bucky Barnes, aka the Winter Soldier. Um, and we open the open the scene with uh, a very great aerial acrobatics uh, action montage. No, no great. No, no, no positive. Okay. So we open with an aerial uh, action. You. Thank you. Action uh, scene, which is great. Yes. And we are introduced to a new supporting character, uh, Jacquin Torres, who is going to be uh, the Air Force's uh, lieutenant that works with Sam Wilson. So we get Liaison. our introduction to the first new supporting character, young guy, uh, really cool. Um, and then we jump to them dealing with uh, the blip. So these two characters were both uh, disappeared because of the blip. So they've been gone for five years. So now we have repercussions of them picking up their lives. So Sam Wilson returns, we get a great scene where Sam Wilson absolutely actually gives up the Captain America shield because he feels that it doesn't belong to him. Uh, and then we see him and we're introduced to our new uh, supporting character, Sarah, his sister, and her failing business um, that he is coming to try and help save. Um, and he has to deal with the repercussions of, he's had no finances for five years or whatever since he was the blip. So th these are these are challenges that, that, that uh, people who came back from the blip. So this is maybe what Andre wanted to see, uh, having to reintegrate with the world. So we get that, which is really cool. And then we also get uh, Bucky Barnes's character uh, dealing with his repercussions. So he has been pardoned by the US government for some reason, and he is uh, picking up the pieces of his life and trying to uh, go through his redemption, which is um, 
making amends for the things that he's done in the past. And we get a couple new characters here as well. So we get Yuri, uh, an older man that he kind of has ties to his past. And uh, I won't reveal exactly what happens there. And we have a potential love interest, a character called Leah. So we're going to see this man out of time, uh, which is, I guess, different from Steve Rogers, that he doesn't quite um, get this as, as well as uh, everybody else. Um, and then... <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually had rehearsed this and now everything is just gone from my brain so did you save the um, notes locally on your phone and not to the iCloud <laughs> because I'll, I'll, it's, somebody it's, else I know may have done hold on, I'm looking at my notes I'm looking at my oh notes oh my gosh all right keep on going John this is this, okay this, this so is he's my, yeah so he's trying to make amends yeah. amends with his past um and then we see uh, an investigation of sorts um uh, the new the new character Torres uh, investigates a new villain for the that's going to probably pop up in the rest of the season the flag smashers, and then uh, Bucky Barnes is uh, we see what what he is doing to make his uh, amends um, to get get right with his past, uh, and then we see we get a bomb dropped uh, on whether Sam Wilson did the right thing or not by giving up the shield, and uh, it looks like uh, maybe he made the wrong decision, and then that's how they close out the episode. That was that was a lot, John. We'll work on that for week two. Um, so Robin, both Rob, yeah, yeah, Robin I, I Andres, had it all worked out. And it's John Andres just gave us a Snyder Cut a version of a summary. <laughs> 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 Andre and, and Rob were both silently judging you, and both of them were like, mm-hmm, "Not at all, mm-hmm, not at all." Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so we thank you, John, for that. Uh, it's a work in progress. I look forward to week two. Uh, let's see if we can cut it down a bit um so thank you that was perfect so here we go full spoilers full everything we're gonna go full our thoughts and details onto this uh episode all right john you're up now you can go full full of details full spoilers this is your jam this is everything you've hoped for this is everything in episode one that you'd possibly want and we already know your thoughts on the first action sequence go for it yeah yeah so first action sequence my initial thought is um I got to call up Wesley Snipes and I got to talk to him about a movie he did back in 1994 called Drop Zone. And I got to tell him, we now have the technology to follow <laughs> up that with an absolutely spectacular sequel. Um, so Drop Zone 2, Snipes, hit me up. I'll, I'll start working on the script right now. Um, if you haven't watched it, uh, definitely check that, that movie. That was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, we got, we got a c- cool surprise cameo. GSP shows up uh, as Batrock the Leaper. Um, and man, was that a sequence? Like, I, I like when they were like, I don't know if it's called a halo jump or whatever they were doing. Squirrel lighting. Squirrel jump, yeah. Uh, and yeah, the squirrel and then they would, then they, I don't know how the physics of it works, but they were, they would snake back into a helicopter. I'm like, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Um, mm. I don't know how you avoid the blades and kind of like. You don't, but it. it's, it's, but, it looked cool. It's yeah, but that, that was, yeah. that was super cool. I absolutely love, I thought I was going to be, I've got my Winter Soldier hoodie on here if you're listening on the audio. I thought Winter Soldier, Winter Soldier is normally my guy. Um, but Sam Wilson, man, he's shone in this episode. Um, his relationship with his sister seemed like the, the chemistry between him and whoever played his sister was fantastic. And the fact that he has to deal with this um, coming back and wanting to save his family's boat or whatever, um, and, and, try, and hoping that you know, his, his credentials as a hero maybe kind of helps a little bit, but, but seems like no one's gonna help. And he can't call Tony Stark, Tony Stark's gone. So I don't know how he's gonna get, get the help. And, he, and, he, and he, does a, he, he makes a really good performance. Like when his sister hits him, he's like, okay, don't hit me. And then he like starts like explaining everything and stuff like that. So, uh, and his whole speech about, you know, there's no early, I mean, there's no on time, there's early and late and stuff like that. That's all character development that he established in uh, Winter Soldier. Like the, the fact that he's that type of character. And I love all these, um, all these supporting characters, like his, his Lieutenant uh, Torres, um, the, the younger guy, I thought he was really cool. Um, and um, I don't know about the, uh, the whole, U.S. agent costume. I don't know if you guys dug that costume at the end. Um. <laughs> it's, fine. it's fine. It's U.S. agent. Yeah, yeah, what, the, it, it's, it's very true to U.S. agent. Like, what do you like? You know, yeah, that, know. that's it's that's weird. that's his jam. Like, he doesn't have the um, like the full star on the front, so it's fine. Yeah. So we so we got a little bit of everything. We got yeah. the, we got we got some comedy. We got um, we got solid action. Like, it's 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 pretty crazy the time we're in now. Like the even though we had criticisms of Wandavision, um, but Wandavision this show like the, the this quality of TV. It's crazy. It's crazy that like I was watching it and my wife thought it was a movie. She's like, how come that movie was so short? And I was like, it's actually a TV show, right? She's like, oh, but it had all the people that were in the movie from it. I'm like, yeah, it's cool. They're, they're coming. I don't know if you even want to call it slumming, but they're coming down to do a, a TV show. And, that, and that, I think that's great. 
Um, and, <laughs> if you and thought I, that movie was short, you should show her then the Snyderverse and be like, here, if you want yeah. a longer movie, <laughs> balance it out. She wants like, right. you guys are still watching that movie? Oh, <laughs> all right. No, it's all short. right. We're going we're gonna to jump yeah. over to for yeah. Rob and we'll come yeah, back with ahead. you, John. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Wow. Um, yeah, I liked it. So one of the criticisms I had about WandaVision was that I always felt like it wasn't enough. I didn't feel uh, full. And I felt this is great. This is a, an episode. It was full of information. It was a lot of fun. Like John said, I don't need to reiterate the, the, the flying sequence at the beginning was a hell of a lot of fun physics aside. Um, and I felt great after watching it. I was like, awesome. I'm excited for, for, you know, episode two, uh, this coming Friday, but I felt like it was, I was, uh, I was full from, from watching it. So that was a great part. A couple of things that did stick out though. Um, I mean, I, I, my, even my son was like, oh, I thought they were going to get together. And I guess obviously the first episode is showing their progress, uh, away after the blip. And yet, why are they no longer Avengers? Like there, that wasn't really, you know, Sam made a comment about how he's doing things freelance now. Um, and so I don't understand what's happened to the Avengers since the blip. It's, I, I guess, are they no longer uh, an entity or I don't, I don't know. So that hasn't we'll really been out. explained. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't know how to tread on this without making waves, but I feel like there is an undertone of, um, like a racial tension happening as to why this, I think he was the head of DOD mm -hmm. almost like was forcing Sam to give up the mm -hmm. shield and then turned it over to this white guy at mm -hmm. the end of the movie. And I, so I'm kind of like, I'm very interested to see how that plays out, especially given today's the last number of years, real world politics on things. Um, so for me, I was like very interested in, in how and seeing how that plays out. Um, I I actually I gotta say though we didn't see the Winter Soldier fight except when he had the flashback um, back in uh, you know from a number of years earlier and man he moves fast and so I part of me is like I really hope he move I felt like he moves faster as the Winter Soldier than he has as Bucky Barnes since being rehabilitated so I I just I want to see him in action because he's so quick and just so lethal and deadly and I kind of hope they don't lose that. Um, I like the scene of Sam and, and his sister and, and the whole thing in the bank. And he's like, and the guy's like, wait, don't you guys get paid? And he's like, can I take a selfie with you? And he's like, come on, man. I'm just here to like help my mm -hmm. families. But mm -hmm. it is an interesting, it's one of those things that's like, you've probably thought about, but not thought about. It's like, yeah, mm -hmm. how do they like, do they, how do they buy clothes? Like who gives them money for this stuff? So, um, so overall, I, I was quite happy with it. I'm excited to where it goes. I'm glad that it left. Uh, on the kind of the quasi cliffhanger that it did with revealing of the, even though they don't call him US agent, they call him the new Captain America. I, I like how that it ends up like that uh, because I think if you introduce a new character in that first episode, it would have been too much. So I'm all, this is man, this is, this is my jam. I'm excited. I'm, I, I loved it. Uh, I, I want to go forward and I can't wait for episode two. Perfect. Uh, Andre, your thoughts. Yeah. So, uh, listen, this is, this is everything that, uh, for me that, that, uh, WandaVision wasn't in, in one episode mm -hmm. like this, you know, you see, you see this show and I'm hard on Marvel. I'm hard on all these superhero shows and stuff, but I'm like, sure. when these guys write and they write well, boom, amazing. Like, like we were all hoping it's got some of that winter soldier vibe. Hell yeah, it did. Mm -hmm. But again, like, let's, let's look at what, what the, what, boys already talked about man you have an amazing amazing action sequence right out of the get-go right you've got something that looks movie quality if they are going to be able to do this i don't want movies no more mm -hmm. give me six episodes like this because mm -hmm. look the pandemic's changed everything but you know it's got it it had the action it looked great cool characters uh you know cameos without fucking spoiling cameos we see don Cheadle in there yep. we saw batrock the really? leaper and guess what batrock doesn't die so we know boom he can come back you know you get this you see how amazing a person sam wilson is whoever is writing this sam wilson you know they, they've got to start Malcolm translating this into, into the books because right from winter soldier he was instantly likable when he meets cap then he's got this amazing speech about why he gives back the shield and he's talking about symbols and what it means. And guess what? This symbol right. is bigger than the symbol. This symbol is part of the man. So, so here I'm putting it, I'm doing the right thing. 
He goes back to help his family. He's, you know, and he's, he's like, hey, you, you can't sell this house. This is, this is, we grew up here, but he hasn't been there for five years, right? So all, all that stuff is amazing. Like John said, chemistry and stuff, like just acting, like instant connection with the character, as well as for me, they're addressing the blip, right? This is stuff that they, you know, so maybe all the other stuff, that wasn't their job. They're going to address it in this series and, and I'm for it. But listen, wow, Sebastian Stan, the Bucky Barnes stuff. Holy crap, how cool was that? We get his having this nightmare. You see that scene where he pops the gun like this. I'm yep. like, damn, choreography, <clears throat> paying attention. They ain't bullshitting with this show. They ain't cutting corners so far right after one episode, right? But even better is the conversation now with his, uh, I guess, psychologist or whatever. And mm. she drops the bomb. She's like, listen, I was also a good soldier. I know what you're feeling. Talk it through. And then you get him talking through. Just amazing. Another action set piece. But again, that action set piece had a point to build on what is going on in the show. It wasn't just a gratuitous action scene. You know, um, John talked about the uh, him having a friend. And I was hoping, I was really, really hoping that it, he might have found one of the people that survived World War II. Like yeah, World that's War II who I vet. thought that guy yeah, was. I and, thought it was like and, that Asian guy. From, yeah, but yes, then it was, I was like heartbroken when he's like, he's trying to do right oh, because he killed this guy's son. And I'm like, oh, I, I was damn. so dumb. I was like, is he going to help this guy find out what happened to his son or something? <laughs> yeah. And then I'm like, oh, shoot, that was the son. The yeah. Guy. He's and the it, guy that messed up. I was like, and I was like, yeah. and I was like, like, like bam, I'm to, like, to, to, to make this guy help this guy. <laughs> yeah. I was like, whoa, this is the, and, and I was just like, yo, this yeah. is, this is, again, there's some heartfelt, true heartfelt moments in, in this, you know, uh, making us care about a character. Like he even says, he's like, yo, well, I've only had some peace in Wakanda. So I'm already feeling for this guy. But I love how they're going to wrap it up. Like Rob said, he didn't want them to meet. But you know what's going to bring these guys together. Because you see, he's like, oh, the, the, the psychiatrist, like, you don't even answer your text from your friend Sam. But yeah. you know they both watch that show. And they're like, hell no. Nobody mm -hmm. gets that shield except for one of us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We are going to honor his vision. So if they get together, beat the crap out of that guy, steal the shield back, and then they're pursued by the government again, this is going to be one hell of a ride. And I got to yeah. say, like, listen, first as first episodes go for shows, 12 out of 10, probably one of the best uh, best beginnings I've, I've, I've seen. Cool. But it also caveats on because they are propelling it off of what has gone before, you yeah. know. Um, and I will say just kind of a last, uh, you know, quick point on it. Um, I hope I hope this is this is what they're going to do going forward. You know, I thought, I thought it was uh, just really well, I, cool. And it's everything already that shield could have been like, you know, like I didn't expect Don Cheadle to be in there. I didn't expect bad truck. You got all these characters. You're putting it in this universe. Do it. You're an actor, silver screen, small screen. Doesn't matter right now. And we didn't Tell even get Zemo in the first can. episode. We didn't even get like Baron Zemo didn't even show up in episode. Yeah. Seven. And you're like, Hold true. He's, yeah, he's, Agent 13, like there's a lot of stuff. Like the fact that they introduce, as as John mentioned, the new Falcon in this just as a throwaway character. You're like, oh, this is, this is, he's the new Falcon. Like this is going to happen. Like they're already yeah. kind of trenching like the next guy, that relationship of like, oh, let me fix that. And he's like, no, every time you guys deal with this tech, you break it. So it's a cool, like this guy who is theoretically in the comics, the next Falcon, right? So it's, it's setting off kind of the, the next level of like, organic passing of the torch is he which, part of the new young avengers i think so. because that's no, what the, they're i don't the, I, oh because I, that's I, the I direction that i feel that they're they were going in they're they're talking about right with the mcu so yeah. that's why i like, didn't know it, it's an organic passing of the torch rather than i always complain about dc it's like we're just gonna retcon your character to make him someone else this is like mm -hmm. no marvel does like the character that you love is still there we're just gonna pass off the name but they'll still be around don't worry they're still a falcon he'll just be now he's captain america and then the falcon title goes to someone else so uh yeah I, and how cool was Redbird? yeah it was cool yeah. to like, see the combination damn, of the, man the, that was again the, the, the cooperative nature of their relationship because in the comics we know it as an actual bird bird but this is like a way of doing it yeah but i think andre to your point um this show is a traditional action tv show so I get, I come with this very, very difficult, uh, different in terms of my expectations. I know this is like a Winter Soldier style TV show. So what better deliver? WandaVision, it was like, we're going to try something new. So I forever to give WandaVision a different type of break because it was always 
a, a, a weird yeah, it was, idea. It was advertised as something else. Something else. It's an experiment. And, and it's an experiment. And they tried it, worked in different ways. And I still at this day, I look at it as a separate, unique thing. This was the criticism that, you know, the Spielberg and like all these old school directors like, oh, you can't do comic book movies because they're all the same. Like this shows you that each genre is different. Each time you do something, it doesn't, it's not like a Western because they keep on saying, well, comic books will be like Westerns. Everyone will get bored of it. If they keep on changing it to do this action sequence and Loki and all of a sudden the drama, the time travel, each time they give us something different, the genre will never get stale because it's always <clears throat> something new. To the point of the, the, the writer, uh, Malcolm Spellman is the writer. He did, it's again, a wonderful to see a person of color be the head writer. He did Empire. He wrote for that episode. And you can see the economy of like, Disney usually stays away from, you know, talking about race and color and like disparity in terms of the economy. And this is pretty much it. It's like, it's, Falcon's a black man asking for money and they're like, yeah, we can't do it. But like, if he was a white man, maybe he probably, if, if it was winter, US Winter Soldier walked in there or or maybe it was US agent, be like, yeah, don't worry about it. We'll get, we'll get. it's just it's like, it, it shows him that he fights for the country with he loves and the country doesn't love him back. And that's again, another topic of like, if you're a person of color in, in America or even anywhere, it's like, you're not always appreciated the same way. Yes, you are, but really at the end of the day, you're not. And that level is there. The PTSD with, with Bucky, just the level of like him trying to get back, like it's heartbreaking. But again, he's done a lot and he's trying to do amends. Like even that conversation with the date he was on where it's like, pinnacle he's like oh you're like 100 how old are you like 106 and he's just like just nonchalantly saying the truth and she's giggling and he's like oh dear god like this is this is where i'm at now so everything about the show was just french kiss perfect and i have to do a big shout out to carrie uh sugland who is the uh director of the series it just again shows how amazing marvel is at finding talent this this woman a canadian director who did five episodes of Traders, one of my secret low love CBC shows. Like she did CBC TV, like she did The Listener. She did like Terminal City. Like she's a, a director from Ottawa, just just like um, just like what happened with um, Deborah, Deborah Chow. It's like finding active directors, a strong female director in a different area and just giving her the opportunity. Like you could easily give it to like, oh, this guy was the second AD on like The Winter Soldier. We're gonna give it to him to do it. but to go outside and give it to a different person. And like, again, she did such a masterful job at this first episode of balancing the nuance of both dialogue and action. And this is what Andre and I talked before about what we're missing on these, the, the Star Wars shows. It's like, it's 37 minutes, but it could have been three more minutes longer and it would have been so much more better. And this, I can, Andre, we can both agree it was 40 minutes, but we weren't complaining it was 40 minutes this time around. They gave us everything no, see, we wanted see, you know, and we wanted more. It was that's exactly perfect it. balance. They, they were able to give us character and character moments for all the characters while introducing new characters mm -hmm. that actually had some some substance. Like yeah. this one episode again. Like you know, I hope the Mandalorian people are watching this and going, yeah. "Uh oh, look what our competition across the the uh, studio yard is yeah. doing." Because there's no reason the Mandalorian could not be as strong as that, yeah. especially with all the history of Star Wars. And the, even even though you're fleshing out new characters, that's yeah. how you do it. Like I know you're gonna say, "Oh, it's a different genre. They're going for a space western." Blah 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 blah. But this, again, this this episode, like I, again, props to them, and and uh, you know the only thing that they can do here, and I hope they don't, is disappoint because they've. Well, here, they, here's they, I think the, hit it, man. here's the thing. As I jump to John next, is that we know it's six episodes, and I think part of us is all like, one episode's done. You, you didn't even have Falcon and Winter Soldier in an episode together. You're like, we're running out of runway. Like we yeah. have four episodes. Like five <laughs> you're starting to get nervous. Like, oh, already no, no, no. the sweat. We're like. <laughs> That episode was so good. And we're like, yeah. oh, there's so much left. Like there's right. five more episodes of like maybe 40 minutes. How are they going to get <laughs> all of like Zemo and yeah. Agent 13 and like the, the flash, like we've seen the trailer of what this show is. And you're like, oh dear God, they only have five episodes. How are they going to do this? Yeah. I so got now no fear. it's like, we know they have a limited path and it's now, are they going to maximize it? Because we can go, I have a feeling it could go either way by episode three where all of us are like, Oh God! They still—they're still. They're still where, what? What are they going to do? Like, there's not much time left. <laughs> Spoiler: They don't meet till episode six. <laughs> <laughs> well, even even the trailers oh right God, now are ruining the jokes of like this thing because 
like I was dying of laughter. Like, and I know maybe Andre, you won't like it, but like, you know, and I'm ruining it now, but there was a whole thing where mm-hmm. Sam and Bucky are talking and he goes, it could be like, these guys are super strong. It could be one of these three things. It's like, it's like, and Bucky's like, what? It could be like aliens, robots, and, and wizards. And then Bucky's like, what wizards? There's no wizard, like wizards. Big three. <laughs> and it's like, well, it's like, doc- and then Sam goes, Dr. Strange is like, he's, he's a sorcerer. It's like, a well, sorcerer is a wizard without a hat. And I'm just dying. I'm like, this is the world they live in. So this is like, they know that they're aliens, robots, sorcerers, like they fought like Ultron and they fought, you know, Thanos, there was a blip. So like, this is all the vernacular. So I give a lot of pass to the the ridiculousness of the flying through the squirrel suits to helicopters because they've already fought aliens. It's just cool. They did it well. You just let it go. Okay, John, what was your favorite part of this episode? What do you do? What was the thing you left going, man, awesome. Well, yeah, you can't you can't stop that intro scene. But I feel like uh, Anthony Mackie had a lot of really great lines. Like when when uh, Torres is like, they call themselves the Flash, the Flag Smashers. He's like, so they're bad guys giving themselves bad names or something like that. <laughs> and, and just like those those little things, like the, like mm-hmm. it's the same thing he did in Winter Soldier. Yeah. He he doesn't have much time to do what he does, mm-hmm. but when he gets that time, he just shines. Like yeah. like even 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 if you watch like we've talked about it before, if you watch the behind the scenes stuff, he had that that phrase, cut the check or whatever. Yeah. He's shining in the behind the scenes documentary. Yeah. Like this yeah. guy is just is just magic. So I I, I think um that the, that action sequence and, and the kind of lines like when he when he jetpacks, I'm gonna keep going until Stu stops me. He no, jetpacks, okay. clotheslines that guy into that uh into that box of crates. I'm like, damn, how do you make this guy Falcon? Who, when I read him back in the day, I was like, how do you make this guy with wings? Like, like call, call up the yeah. X-Men and go, yeah. Hey, this is what you need to do with Archangel to make him cool. Instead of like the yeah. biggest loser on the X-Men roster. Whoa, whoa, right? whoa, so, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> what did he do? What's down. he done in the movies? What's he done right. in the movies? Warren other than the die. Third has money. Yo, he's the Bruce Wayne of, of this bag rolling. Well, the, the there, there's, there's a new, X-Men there's, there's a new book coming out that features Warren Worthington and Monet St. Cross, and they're going to be the boardroom of the X-Men. I'm, I'm <laughs> so all it's going to be like that. suits in, in an X-Men not comic. Forget That's going to be funny. Rolls but... the, the super X-Men. It's, it's Angel who, who theoretically, he has no problems with flying around the world with, with wings on yeah. because everyone's like, oh my God, you're an angel. But they've, so... never, they've never made him this cool in the movies. So yeah. Th- not yet. But yeah. We'll see. <laughs> um, Rob. Oh man, there's so much. I don't even know how to pick. It'd be the weight of the burden, Anthony Mackie's speech. Um, oh, that Winter's, speech. Oh God. Yeah, Winter, Winter, so yeah you know, um, you know, Winter Soldier having the conversation with with his older friend, and then with the date. I mean, but I, you know, listen, I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna be a typical guy. I'm gonna go one of the action scenes, and I, I as much, you know, so we've already talked, you know, a lot about the beginning. Um, but that action scene with Winter Soldier, you know, his flashback, that dream sequence, even though it's, it's a memory as opposed to an actual dream, uh, man, it was just so vicious and violent and fast and fluid. So that that was just and to yeah, he rolls love, hops that guy through the wall. Yeah, and and to the complaint when you hear the Winter Soldier like echo noise of like that, that it's like the violent. That, yeah, like you're like, you you're like hear oh. Andre. I imagine Andre was just like. <laughs> losing his mind yeah. because that is the sound cue that the the that andre was complaining about in superman versus batman <laughs> and in justice league but they know that that chime that comes in yeah and you know when that you know what's gonna happen when you hear it yeah it's a bad it's, it's, shit gonna happen <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so that for me that was my favorite scene of the show uh, uh, andre, but i mean yeah there's so many there's so many yeah. andre yeah, I don't know how I can pick one because pick one. literally, literally, I love the show so much. I watched it twice already. So wow. like, like, this is, I, I did so, that too. I did so that too. If, yeah, yeah. If if I have to pick one, uh, and I'll I'll just be a little bit more uh, specific. Then I will say the second time he launched Red Bird, and mm-hmm. then it's the, the the machine gun came out, and then the missiles yeah. came out. I'm like, yeah. oh damn, this thing's an arsenal. But that that whole yeah. first fight scene, I'm like, what a way to start. So and. The thing that I I hope in by their track record, they're not you know they're not giving you know it's not going to be top heavy. Like if we saw this action scene, it's not the best one. 
they're going to save the best for in the middle or the last. Yeah. I mm-hmm. truly, truly believe that with how they're doing it. Well, the truck so scene I'm hasn't just, even come I'm up yet. I'm super stoked yeah. for for it you even, know? even the non-action scenes that even the simple scene where he's putting the shield in the leather seat yeah like like how like the how he like kind of like just respects it and like kind of like places it in zips it up and kind of has like a little ceremony it's that was dude, even, that was cool that was the like show's chilling. got authenticity like even hmm. even like john said he's talking to his his sister and he says you know you're either early or you're late and then the sister says okay you know your your uncle's coming to watch you know video games and then the kids yeah. count and then to the like, car two, drives two, off one. and they're like <laughs> video games it's it's so true it just yeah. Yeah. felt very like like real and not forced yeah. you know and, like and andre to the point it's again we talk about before it's that extra three seconds that that star wars mandalorian didn't do it was like just add the three seconds after of like goofiness or like pause of like the gravitas and and that was what Winter Soldier did. It just it just let it simmer a teeny bit longer for you to pull it up, and you're like, ah, good. Like, and you go on to the next thing. Yeah, and um, and also yeah. if I can just you know gush on the show, the, the the humor wasn't forced. Like that date, like that felt natural. Yeah. She's like, he's like, what are you doing? Reading your mind, and then he's got this little flash of panic, almost like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and then he's like, B six, and he's like, hit, and you're just like, yo, again, the the the, the writing on just on point you know and, and no, no, I, I would watch a show of just anthony mackie and his sister trying to rebuild their family's business he didn't even yeah, he wouldn't like even have if, to put on the superhero costume i, I, I would, would also watch, watch a show where bucky Barnes just goes on dates sponsored by match.com or, or just goes to the therapy <laughs> session uh, it's, this is a cross-pollination yeah. opportunity marvel match.com have sebastian stan just go on dates non-stop <laughs> they might be speed date. dating could you <laughs> imagine yeah. so i i want to ask though because there was one and I, this is going to be i'm sure kind of controversial um Don Cheadle. Mm-hmm. I am a huge fan of Don Cheadle, but he's 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 a bit more of a senior individual a statesman. He's 56, 57 years old in real life. He he's very thin and he's I think he's a shorter uh he just for me, I'm like, is are we still believing Don Cheadle is war machine yeah like because he, he puts on a suit i of armor. almost felt it's like the suit of armor the experience, the, experience yeah. the, even suit. his yeah. yeah but even his even his uniform his military uniform it looked too big for him it's fine. like i just i, like, I guess it's, a robotic it's, not, suit. it's not it's not leather and it's not like straps on no, armor. I'm, like, I, I'm saying yeah. even his even his his military uniform looked too yeah. big like it just but, he, but he i'm a big fan of don Cheadle, but i'm starting to so yeah, I don't know. I'm just starting to like not it, it, the believability of him being able to roll with these guys. Believability wearing a robot a suit? Bit. Are you yeah, kidding yeah. me? I don't. I don't know if I got that impression. Yeah. You know. Um. And and hey, they they gotta have faith because they're doing an armor war show with him, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Or it's been announced. You know, yeah. like so. Yeah. Um. So Rob, you want thank Chance you Howard for back? jumping way? ahead to tell us what you didn't like about the show. <laughs> uh, John, what did you not like about this show? Um, yeah, so so you guys gave me crap before. I'm like, this this is a vibranium shield, right? And they essentially take it and put it in an IKEA case. Are we okay with that? This is in the Smithsonian. A CG she slabbed it. This is what how they did. secure is the Smithsonian, <laughs> the Smithsonian given the yeah. given the current climate of superheroes and stuff like that? Yeah, but, but yeah, other, yeah, but a other shield than that, is not really. a killer robot that can be reprogrammed to kill someone. Like a shield is oh, you still have yeah. to throw it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I the one criticism oh, I is when just maybe put it in there. Oh, Andre's cutting off. Okay. For the oh, yeah. ceremony, John, knowing that they would give it to somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I'm just saying, it was, it was, clearly you I'm, know just make, I'm just making a joke because you guys gave me crap about them bearing vision. Sorry. But but, but, yeah. but, the, but the criticism I would have is probably when Torres goes to that Flag Smashers meeting yeah. and he sees that guy destroy everybody. And then he's like, oh, you know, let me whip out my gun and do a citizen's arrest. I'm like, I don't think you should do that. I think you should follow, maybe either follow the money or, run away. or follow the guy <laughs> and call your superhero buddy. Like, I know you want to try and prove yourself. But whipping out your gun, uh, he's lucky he didn't die. I thought he was going to die because I yeah. didn't realize he was this existing character. I was like, oh, he's dead. <laughs> but he's, he's, he's lucky to be alive. Like yeah. I thought that was kind of a, a silly move. Like he kicks the cop in, and flies yeah. into the pole. And you're like, he, clearly this guy has superpowers. But I'm going to point a gun and do a citizen's arrest. Like that was kind of ridiculous. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Uh, Andre, I know you're going to find it very hard, but pick, pick the thing you hate. Hate. <laughs> hate's a strong word for Andre. <laughs> yeah, or maybe because it was only forty minutes. Is that is that the is that the MacGuffin you're gonna say it was only like I wanted more? Like, if I can say that, yeah, I, I literally can't think <laughs> of any any part in that 
um, that I mm. that I did not. Okay, I will pick a part. Uh, him just sitting in Tunisia or whatever, mm -hmm. and he's fixing the thing right out in the open, <laughs> yeah. and someone With walks all the wires by. Out. And <laughs> yeah, he says, "Oh, oh Avenger, you saved me." I'm like, "Okay." Like, first of all, like, who's gonna be able to pick up a random black guy? You know that they've only ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> like goggles on or whatever as an avenger in tunisia what are the odds you know what i mean like somebody might walk by and go is that you know like is that so and so but anyways that's nitpicking honestly I, there was nothing i didn't like about it so far so good. i'm sure if you're an avenger that saved the world you'd be as famous as lebron james i think lebron lebron james walks into tunisia and sat on a table and be like oh you're lebron james like it's it's kind of a thing where <laughs> well, they would just sure, you're a celebrity like they six know. foot nine but just a dude that looks like anthony mackie that's that's like you know He's not. He's not that distinguishable. <laughs> eh, I, I don't. He he brought back the daughter, so it was like he brought back my daughter. Like you just think the guy that you know was part of the team that brought everyone back. Yeah, so it is what it is. Anyway, um, like I said, I'm I was I was grasping. Yeah, grasping at straws. Okay. Um. Okay. Here we go. So, needless to say, as we wrap things up, as we're finishing off, because we can only talk about how awesome this thing is for so long. Um, <laughs> Rob, we're gonna have to bring in someone that hates it. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. We, we, it's only episode one. Episode two could fall flat on its face, so we're gonna see what happens. Um, do you, what or do you think, John, based on the fact that it's only five episodes, <laughs> that they're gonna be able to pull this off quickly, as we talked about it, or do you think they're gonna be the show's gonna end kind of left in the lurch as well? Because no, again, I, these I, shows I, don't I, seem to have a perfect bow on them. So what are your yeah. final thoughts? No, no, I, I think I think this is a good episode count. This is not yeah. this is six episodes is not being greedy. They probably could have cut uh, ten or or eight like one division got. Mm. But the, when you fuel things with action like this, you and and you don't have the budget to keep delivering action like this, then then I think six episodes is 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 a good spot. Um, it definitely, it will probably leave us wanting more. But you know, it's hopefully mm -hmm. they'll have another season or something like that. Yep. Yeah, I think this this is the perfect number for me i think all right rob do you have any concern about the show as it goes forward or no i don't i think that i i, I well obviously yeah i mean there's a lot as you said a lot to to pack in i think that we have to be careful we've seen a lot in the trailer half of this of the final trailer that came out a week and a half ago is in this show mm. and then the scene that we're all waiting for sam to be throwing the shield and whatnot i feel like those are actually flashback scenes uh, that take place before this i think so um, you know, there's a lot, the whole U.S. agent thing. I mean, is this a, a long drawn out character who's going to be part of the MCU going forward or not? Uh, the Baron Zemo, like there's a lot. Like, so we always complain as we're getting closer to the end of these shows. Like there's a lot, there's not much runway left and they've got to pack a lot in. We're at the point where it's like, we've seen one episode. Holy shit. As you said, we have five. Can they pack it all in? I, I'm, we'll, we'll know after next week. Next week will be the break point where we are starting to like shit our pants being like, oh my God, they're not going to be able to do it. They're not going to be able to stick the landing or not. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistically hopeful, but uh, there's also that pessimistic part of me going, ah, just be careful. So yeah. Andre, any concerns? Um, I don't have any concerns because it's 40 minutes. Uh, so it's already feels like it's double the length of like Mandalorian or WandaVision. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they've already laid a lot of the groundwork here. Uh, so we might not ever know what happens to the family and the boat and stuff like that, but that's going to be more, um, you know, information for the character of, uh, of Sam Wilson going forward that maybe they uh, talk about later. But I think that all the groundwork is there brilliant to, to drop the U S agent thing. So we now have the motivation to get them there and then it can hit the ground running. So I, I think this was a setup uh, show that did everything extremely well and they don't need to 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 give us more of that uh, next time if anything it just shows you that they're gonna how these things are gonna tie in baron zemo is all all obviously got ties to the flag smashers and somehow the the head of dod might have been a, a, a still a hydra sleeper agent tied to zemo and thus captain america or u.s agent is gonna all fall into that so i think the show will either end well by tying up two of those things and then they're going to leave one for whatever the other thread that they want to dangle so i would probably be betting that it's going to be zemo getting away because he got away again the first time i can't see us agent becoming a, a threat or character into the mcu movie 
universe, but maybe he's just a guy like who'll show up around like Batrock, uh, you know. Uh, and so if you just got a a C level villain or or adversary that's just going to stick their rear their head up every time, but be cool as hell when you do, right? So okay, uh, two quick things before we wrap that up. Uh, Andre, can you inform the people at home who the heck U.S. agent is quickly? Like, give us a little bit of like a, a reminder because oh, uh, some US people don't even know. Is... Like, all of us are like, oh yeah, U.S. agent. Like, like, but I think maybe some people don't know as well as like the history because so he's a character in, that's been a, in the comic oh, books. There was a there was a time period where Captain America no longer wanted the shield. He was just uh, kind of uh, uh, was like disenfranchised <laughs> with everything and stuff. Uh, and the government decided to replace him with a, another high ranking, highly decorated um, soldier named John Walker, I believe. Yeah, but mm-hmm. of course, yep. John Walker ended up, you know, the power going to his head and he, he wasn't all right in the head as well um, and uh, and stuff. And that led to basically Cap going to Tony Stark to get another shield and he put on a black costume uh, and uh they ended up going, uh, you know, fighting and stuff. But John Walker, um, I think he became, what was that other guy? He got the weaponized arm and stuff. So, and he's been experimented on and stuff. Uh, not quite the super soldier serum uh, and stuff, but uh, but super he was su- a strong light. adversary. Yeah, super soldier light, uh, was strong adversary for Cap, was on one of the Avengers teams. Uh, and such but then he did fall from grace and cap took the took the shield back so this isn't a character of course that uh, the mcu has created uh they do mine um uh the comics for characters and stuff but of course a totally different origin uh and stuff um uh for the show and stuff but again they've they've managed to make it work in this context Right and, and and for those at home, there's another sneak peek coming up with the another original Captain America. So that's a, another thing that Andre will talk about at a later date because that's where I'm also like, oh my god, they have so much show left, and then they still have the other Captain America that's going to be in the show. So that's a that's a grainy tease for you all at home to like, oh, another Captain America, and it ain't Steve Rogers. So uh, tune in future episodes as Andre will educate us all on the original Captain America uh before captain america so there it is yes. um so uh andre we'll before- get the truth we'll get the truth uh andre so let's go uh, as we finish off the pod today i have spoken what can you recommend for us to uh get some more uh some goodies that we can re- uh re- watch or read or what's your recommendation okay so on this it's the installment of i have spoken i'm gonna give another Really cool recommendation on a great starting point. If anybody out there is just looking at comics and saying, oh, I'm overwhelmed. I don't know where to start. Um, We've been really fortunate in the past couple of weeks to have some great comics uh, come out and hit the stands. Uh, And I'm going to pick another uh, DC title uh, this week. And the brand new issue of Nightwing just dropped uh, on Wednesday. uh, And they've got new writer of Tom Taylor coming on to the scene. Uh, So this is um, the post-future state uh, of the DC universe. Uh, But I got to say what a fantastic starting point to pick up. So what do you need to know about the character of Nightwing? You just need to know that he was a former Robin and the former uh, um, kind of ward of Bruce Wayne. But in this particular issue, we are, he's in Bloodhaven, which is um, a city close to Gotham. And he is basically a crime fighter with a heart. Uh, And in this, we've got a really cool flashback to his past when he meets Barbara Gordon and uh, and um, Commissioner Gordon, and we see that even from a young point when he was Robin, he had a heart of gold and he and he knew what's going on. Then we segue that into his current uh, timeline where people are kind of torturing a puppy, and he's like, "Not on my watch." Um, then it brings forward into where he's at now in Bloodhaven, what's going on in Bloodhaven, and of course it's a corrupt city just like Gotham. So they introduce you to some characters. But, uh, you know, best of all, there's a really cool moment where uh, Barbara Gordon shows up and she's like, hey, I've I've got to talk to you about something. And uh, recently in Batman, Alfred died uh, and uh, Barbara's the executor of part of his will. And there's a great letter. And even if you guys don't like Nightwing or don't read comics or whatever, pick up this issue just alone for the letter 
that gets written to Dick Grayson from Alfred uh, and stuff. It's it's just heartfelt. It's fantastic. I can't wait to see where this uh, this goes. It's written by Tom Taylor, uh, who basically uh, you might know him from. He's got to start on writing the Injustice comics, which were based on the video game, but did like four seasons of this. Uh, and uh, great writer. He gets these characters. I, I, I got to say, at first I was, you know, he was always doing these characters in an alternate universe. I'm like, okay, he's got some uh, freedom to do that. But in this series, you know, very, very cool. Uh, and uh, yeah, this feels like a great Nightwing. And it's a great starting point. You don't need to know anything before that. All the information is given to you there. And you can basically pick this book up and hit the ground running. Awesome. Awesome. Perfect. Uh, so John and Andre, where can people find you guys Uh in the desert of the real but also on the internet what's going on yeah so so heroes world online all one word that'll take you to the website the social media facebook uh, instagram as well as the youtube if you're on the youtube of course uh link like subscribe uh turn on the notifications so you know when we randomly go live we've been doing some trailer reactions and and you know when these podcasts drop and things like that uh, if you're listening on the audio heroes world podcast on apple itunes all, all your major uh uh, services for audio podcasts uh, and if you're on itunes hit us up with a five-star review if you can and and write and write a little blurb about us that that really helps us out a lot andre and we are uh back open at the store and uh we are 8601 warden avenue that's warden and highway seven stores uh coming together we've moved stuff around a lot more space uh bringing in a nice variety of product which new stuff is almost coming in daily uh so come by the store check us out if you don't feel comfortable doing that though as john said hit us up on the social medias we can arrange curbside a uh, new website we can do some shipping uh or like i said you can do in-store pickup and just call uh, when you arrive so we want to make everything as easy as possible for you uh and uh, hopefully that uh, if you can you can come by and support us because you know the pandemic's not over and it's still a struggle uh or if you can't support us and you're listening to the podcast like what we're talking about support your local comic book store um and stuff listen they, they they're going to appreciate it uh and you can always say thank you to us in our in our social uh, media things if you're going to comment on our stuff but if you're not close to us and again you do like our content as Stu said like comment and share sharing's free you see anything on our facebook share it talk about it uh our instagram share it or comment or become part of the conversation uh that that we have here uh tell us what you like and didn't like about uh what we were talking about awesome uh rob yeah find me on instagram and twitter at rob Gadet. also on mondays uh john and i are live on the sidekick show eight o'clock eastern youtube facebook twitch uh this monday we're wrapping up the snyder cut of justice league so uh the great thing about the show is it's live we have a lot of individuals who like to come in and comment and the dialogue that happens between us and them and themselves so uh, as andre said if you know if you're unable if you're somewhere else and you're able to, to tune in at least you know join us in those conversations and and it's a hell of a lot of fun just a whole bunch of people just talking uh about shows and, and whatnot and we talk about what's happening in the store so join us uh mondays eight o'clock live on youtube uh facebook and twitch Awesome. So thank you all for being with us today as we gush over uh, the Falcon Winter Soldier. <laughs> Clearly, uh, episode, after episode one, uh, they can do no wrong. So uh, thank you again. Please share, subscribe, do all those fun things. Support uh, local any way you can. Be safe out there. Thank you, everyone. See you all later. Thank Bye, you, guys. Everyone. See you guys. Where's the Nanu Nanu? Oh, Nanu Nanu. Ah, uh, there we go. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>